What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, Big Boy National TV. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm here. I'm tonight. I'm gonna go over my WWE Raw review on hot. So if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you guys please watch the video, hit that subscribe button, cause I'm on the road to 7K. And thank you guys so much for the big 6K subscribers, man. Thank you guys so much for all the love and support. Without further ado, let's get started. Now WWE Raw was a decent show, and that's all I gotta say. Monday Night Raw was live from Sunrise, Florida. Amir, Amir Rant Bank Arena. Commentary with Michael Cohen and Pat McAfee. Then now forever together, the WWE video leads us into the show. We see a shot of the, un, the of the Uber Arena in Berlin, German. We are less than three weeks away from Bash in Berlin. Pre-show arrivals. CM Punk is showing arriving at the uh, at the Amir Rant Bank Arena. WWE Women's Tag Team Champions and WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, the Unholy Union, are also in the arena, ready to defend their titles, their opponents, their Pure Fusion Collective, which is a guy awful faction name, and Damage Control are showing arriving separately. Dam Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley arrive together. All right, so we get Randy Orton address World Heavyweight Champion Gunther. And this segment right here, and this, I ain't gonna cap, this was a very, this was a very good segment between Randy Orton and Gunther. All right, very good segment to kick off the show. I hear voices in, I hear voices in my head. They come to me, they understand, they talk to me. All right, Randy Orton makes his way to the ring to a huge ovation. Randy Orton will face Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship at Bash in Berlin. If Randy Orton is successful, he will move into second place for most world titles. Titles held. Replay last week on Raw, Randy Orton vows to beat Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship. Gunther said when it really matters, Randy Orton also screwed it up. His grandfather his grandfather and father were screw ups. Randy Orton is the highest screw up of them all. Drew McIntyre then made his way to the ring. This allowed Randy Orton to use the distraction to hit Gunther with an RKO. The crowd is chanting Randy Orton's name. Randy Orton is decided to be. The, I'm sorry. The crowd is chanting Randy Orton's name. Randy Orton is excited by the reaction. Randy Orton said it's been a minute since he's done this, so he asked them to to bear with him as he as he soaks it in. Randy Orton then says, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Monday Night Raw. The next time he makes the introduction, he'll be a he'll be a 15-time world champion. This match at Bash in Berlin for is for the world championship. That that's all it had to be about. But Gunther decided to make it personal. That only gives him that much more reason to be his you know what in Berlin. Failure to post Last week, when he couldn't help but talk about his father and his grandfather before turning his back on him, he had he had no choice but to take the opportunity to hit him with the three most dangerous letters in sports entertainment: RKO. Um, World Heavyweight Champion Gunther comes out to the stage, and he does not look happy. Gunther says the only thing he needs Randy Orton to do. But the crowd loudly cuts him off with booze. Gunther says it goes for goes for Randy Orton and everyone in the building. The crowd boos louder. Gunther walks out the ring steps and enters the square circle. An RKO chant picks up. Gunther sneers at the crowd. Gunther goes to speak again, but the crowd loudly boos him again, boos him down. Gunther Gunther says what he needs Randy Orton and the crowd to do is shut up and listen to what he has to say. Gunther tells Randy Orton to look at him. He wants to know what Randy Orton is celebrating. He is celebrating the fact that he turned his back on Randy Orton and go and got hit with an RKO. A hey, you suck champ fires up. Gunther tells Randy Orton to celebrate it because if it's the only celebration celebrating he's going to do. Doing what Randy Orton did last week only made this personal. Randy Orton stares back at the World Heavyweight Champion. 
a a US a US champ picks up Gunther tells the crowd they only have a few brain cells to rub together to support Randy Orton. Gunther says since everyone is hyped to see Randy Orton hit another RKL on him, he came here to let them know it will never happen again. Since everyone is aware of of how dangerous a move the RKO is, Gunther is left with no option. When he is done with Randy Orton and Berlin, he will leave him a bloody a bloody mess. Gunther will expose Randy Orton for what he is, a very successful yet very undraft, undrafted chief one-trick pony. Randy Orton says, Gunther keeps running his mouth, which will make the eight-hour eight flight to Berlin more uncomfortable. With a size 15 boot shove up his, you know what? That's a size 15 boot double, double extra wide. Randy Orton prepared to fight, but Gubin Kaiser gets in the ring from behind to attack. Randy Orton fights him off and hits him with a claws on over the top rope. Randy Orton turns and takes it to Gunther. Lubin Kaiser quickly chops blocks Randy Orton's knee. Randy Orton pops up and hobbles around. Gunther clotheslines the Viper down and, sh- and shots at him. The crowd loudly boos, boos Imperium. Th- that was a very good, strong segment between Randy Orton and Gunther to kick off the show. It says right here, very, very good segment to kick off the hashtag WWE with Gunther and Randy Orton. I'm really looking forward to this match at hashtag Bash, WWE Bash in Berlin. By the way, this crowd is red hot. I agree with this. All right, let's move on. Replay last week on Raw. Sheamus and Louis Kaiser were arguing backstage. Pete Dunne then attacked Sheamus from behind and beat him with a shillelagh. Pete Dunne would smash Sheamus' hand with it. Gorilla position. Jackie Redman is backstage with Sheamus, who is holding his left arm. His hand is in a cast. Sheamus says Pete Dunne smashed him with a shillelagh on, on, on the hand. Tonight, he'll get retribution. Pete Dunne will target his injured hand, and, but he still has a few tricks to teach him. Sheamus asks for ladder, ladder down if they're ready for a banger before walking off. In the arena, Sheamus makes his interest. He'll battle Pete Dunne next. So we go to commercial break. We played moments ago. World Heavyweight Champion Randy Orton and Louis Kaiser attack Randy Orton and beat him down. Later tonight, Randy Orton will battle Ludwig Kaiser. Pat McAfee will be in Dublin, Ireland this Saturday on ESPN College Game Day. Sheamus will join him on the show. So this is Pat McAfee's last day on Monday Night Raw. I am definitely going to miss Pat McAfee. That's all I have to say. It is sad to see Pat McAfee go. Anyway, let me continue. So we get Sheamus versus Pete Dunne. And, um... And this match right here, this was a good match. Um, yeah, this was a good match between Sheamus and Pete Dunne. The bell rings and Pete Dunne immediately sidesteps a broke kick. Pete Dunne get, um, plunges away at Sheamus, but Sheamus blocks one and turns him inside out with a clothesline. Sheamus tries to tie him up in the ropes, but Pete Dunne fights him off. Pete Dunne applies a side headlock, but Sheamus punches him off. Sheamus applies a side headlock, but Pete Dunne wipes him off. Sheamus catches him, attempting a leaf frog, frog and slams him down. Sheamus gets him on the apron for the 10 beats of the battering, but Pete Dunne fights him off. Pete Dunne attacks the hand and brings Sheamus to his knees. Pete Dunne starts bending Sheamus' fingers on his injured hand. Sheamus managed to get to his feet and powers Pete Dunne up for a backbreaker over his knee. Pete Dunne rolls to the apron, so Sheamus hits the ropes and knocks him off into the commentary table. Sheamus goes to the ring, goes to the ringside and slams Pete Dunne onto the commentary table. Sheamus uppercuts him and slaps hands with Pete with Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee. Sheamus goes to get Sheamus goes to get into the ring, but Pete Dunne drop drop kicks him down. Pete Dunne then drop kicks Sheamus into the ring steps. Pete Dunne gets on the apron and stumps Sheamus' injured hand on the steel steps. So we go to commercial break. Friday Night SmackDown comes to USA Network on September 13th. Okay, commercial break. 
We're back from the break to see Sheamus holding his left hand in pain. During the commercial break, Pete Dunne worked over the hand. Pete Dunne grabs the arm and chops Sheamus' chest and slaps him in the face. Sheamus tells him to bring it, so Pete Dunne does. Sheamus rocks him with, with some forearms, so Pete Dunne absolutely light him up with a slap to the face. Sheamus calls him a you-know-what. So Pete Dunne runs him over with a forearm smash. Pete Dunne backs up and charges, but Sheamus turns him inside out with a axe handle. Sheamus turns him inside out again with a clothesline. Pete Dunne stumbles to the corner. So Sheamus connects with a corner clothesline. Sheamus hits a scoops power slam, and Pete Dunne rolls to the apron. Sheamus grabs him and tries for the 10 beats of the battering, but Pete Dunne attacks the hand and snaps the fingers. Pete Dunne then... Hits Sheamus with the 10 beats of the battery. Pete Dunn celebrates, but Sheamus gets to his feet and grabs him for the 10 beats of the battery. Sheamus, Sheamus hangs him over the top rope and does the 10 beats of the battery again. We're at 20, 20, 20 beats. Sheamus heads to the corner and the crowd is getting fired up. Sheamus pounds his chest and charges for the bro kick, but Pete Dunn cuts him up with a step up in security. Pete Dunne to the middle of the road for a moonsault block, but Sheamus abbreviates him with a, with a bicycle knee to the face. Sheamus covers 1-2 Pete Dunne, barely kicks out. Sheamus puts Pete Dunne on his shoulders and climbs the middle rope. Pete Dunne slides, slides down and brings Sheamus to the middle of the ring for a sit-out powerbomb for a nail fall. The crowd chants, this is awesome. Pete Dunne grabs Sheamus' injured hand and pulls it through the back of the turnbuckle pad. Pete Dunne punches away at Sheamus before the referee backs him up. Pete Dunne charges and kicks the injured hand. Sheamus in pain. It was, it's in pain. But he powers out and rips the turnbuckle pad off. Sheamus then wipes him out with a broke kick for the win. The winner, the winner by pinfall, Sheamus. This is a very good match by Pete Dunne. Versus Sheamus. A really good hard hitting match with Sheamus and Pete Dunne is I, I absolutely loved it. That was a great finish with Sheamus hand rages in the turnbuckle pad, only to power out and catch his own with a with the bro kick. Pete Dunne looked looked great throughout. I think Sheamus is prime for you know what I'm saying, prime is is prime for. Alright, let's move on. Locker room segment. Audacity Jones is getting fired up with the new day. Audacity Jones walks walks off. Kobe Kingston tells his every words that he has felt his energy has been off. And um, Kobe Kingston wants to make sure Karen Cross isn't getting t- getting to him. As everyone says that isn't the case. As everyone wishes that Kingston talked to him about Audacity Jones coming in, it felt like Kingston is trying to replace Big E. Kobe Kingston says they're not replacing anyone. Kobe Kingston recalls how everyone trash talks the new day when Xavier Woods was trying to bring it up. They suck with it. They they stuck with it and are a family. Nothing will change that. Audacity Jones is in the same boat they they were in back in the day. Kobe Kingston was hoping as veterans they could bring him under their wing. The way the veterans should have done with them as they were coming up. Xavier Woods says Kobe Kenton is right. Audacity Jones walks in and gets fired up. Kobe Kenton walks off with him. Xavier Woods smiles and he is seen. Alright, commercial break. Video highlights are shown from WWE's appearance at Fantasy Fest in New York City over the weekend. So we get a video package. WWE Intercontinental Championship. Braun Breaker says he going to be a star in his in this industry. It's not it's not organic. It's just what it is. A highlight package then plays to showcase his dominance in NXT and and Raw. Replay. Last week on Raw, Ivy Nine tried to get Maxine Dupree to break away from Otis and Akira Sazar later that night. Ivy Nine attacked Maxine Dupree and slammed her on the commentary table. Ivy Nine then locked her in a dragon sleeper. This allows the Cree brothers to pick up the win over Otis and Akira Tozawa. Alright, so we go to backstage segment. 
Chad Gable in the Creed Brothers find RB9 backstage. Chad Gable says his version, his vision is complete and welcome her to America May. RB9 says she, she is the pit bull. She gave Maxine Dupree a chance, but she was holding her back. Chad Gable says after RB9 breaks the Malibu Barbie, um, and they finish with the Phil experiment called the Alpha Academy. They can't focus on on the minus six. They're they're not done with them and will send them crawling back to whatever swamp they came from. How are they made? American made. In the in the arena, Maxine Dupree makes her way to the ring, accompanied by Otis and the characters of Alpha Academy. She'll battle Ivy Night next. So we go to commercial break. All right, so we get Maxine Dupree. Ma- yeah, Maxine Dupree are coming by Alpha Academy. Otis and the Curious Hall versus Ivy Nine are coming by American May. Chad Gable and the Creed Brothers, Brutus and, Ju- Brutus and Julius Creed. Um, and this match, um, this match right here, I did not really care about this match. As Ivy Nine is making her entrance, she turns her back on Maxine Dupree. Maxine Dupree drop kicks her out of the ring. Maxine Dupree goes right, uh, goes to the rings, goes to ringside and throws Ivy Nine into the barricade a few times. Maxine Dupree then connects with a fisherman's suplex on on the floor. Maxine Dupree pulls Ivy Nine up to her feet and throws her over the announcer table. Maxine Dupree grabs Ivy Nine and gets her in the ring. Ivy Nine quickly retreats to the corner. Ivy Nine boosts Maxine Dupree down and punches his way at her. Ivy Nine stomps her down in the corner until the referee backs her up. All of a sudden, the lights, all, yeah, all of a sudden, the lights in the arena begin going out. White smoke filled the ring as the hashtag C piano key plays. Ivy Nine turns around and sees Nikki, sister Abigail, cross in the ring. Chad Gateway and the Creed brothers run into the ring to protect Ivy Nine. The rest of the Riot Six appear on the apron. Nikki Cross attacks Ivy Nine. The Riot Six take out American May and and, and and get the Creed brothers out of the ring. Chad Gilbert is left alone in the arena. Uncle in the ring. Uncle Howdy Bo Dallas appears from behind and hits Chad Gilbert with the sister Abigail. The Riot Six pose in the ring. All right, so the Riot Six attack Chad Gable again. All right, it says good appearance by the Y6 to take out American May. The strobe light was a little annoying and didn't translate well on television, though. Yeah, it was a good appearance by the Y6, and that's all I got to say. Hashtag WWE Raw. All right, backstage segment. CM Punk is walking backstage. He has a leather strap over his shoulders. All right, so we go to commercial break. The Bash in Berlin kickoff show takes place on Friday. It will air live at 10, 10, 10, 10 a.m. Eastern Eastern time. All right, video package. Damian Priest and yeah, yeah, video package. Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley are showing backstage for the for the last two weeks. This new lane lane version of Judgment Day tried to take them out. Highlight our showing of those attempt for the last two weeks. The Terror twin, twin stood in the ring as those the clowns were sent running. For Liv Morgan and Dominic Mysterio, their days are numbered at Bash in Berlin. They will receive the punishment. Ray Ripley says there is nowhere to run or hide at Bash in Berlin. Dom, Dom will find out, find out really quickly that it was her and Damian Priest who were keeping him safe. As for Lil Morgan, she hasn't taken everything. All she's all she done is become the one thing she hates. It's discount Ray Ripley. At Bash in Berlin, the Terror Twins will put them through the mat. I cannot wait for the um Ray Ripley and Damien Priest versus Lil Morgan and, and Dominic Mysterio. That match is gonna be cooking at Bash at Bash in um on Bash in Berlin. That's all I gotta say. All right, let's move on. So we get CM Punk delivering a delivery matches to Drew McIntyre, and this segment right here, um, um, a media core segment. 
yeah, this was a um okay segment to CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. Okay segment for what it was. CM Punk makes his way to the ring. I'm sorry, CM Punk makes his way to the ring with a big letter strap over his shoulders. CM Punk high fives some fans as well as Samantha Irvin and Pat McAfee. A loud CM Punk chant picks up. CM Punk says they're they're got a lot to get to, but it is great to be alive be alive on Monday in our Raw in South Florida before they get started. He wants to congratulate the Florida Panthers on winning the Stanley Cup championship. CM Punk asks how he looks and mentions to back mentions the bags under his eyes are getting a getting a little bigger. A let's go Panthers chant picks up. CM Punk says he didn't get a lot of sleep last night because he's excited excited to share some news. Before they get down to business, he wants to tell a story. This weekend, he spent some time in New York City at the event called Fantix Fest. Someone in the green room asked him about the hot, st- hot streak WWE is on. They asked why CM Punk thought he was on a hot streak. The answer is easy. It is the fans. They're on a hot streak because of, of the fans. It's the animals in the 300 level. It's all the freaks here. Live in the living color. CM Punk met a lot of green, great fans. The first person in line for pictures was a young lady in the wheelchair. She told CM Punk that she had just d- defeated cancer somehow. CM Punk was a s- source of strength for her. It makes him think of his two friends battling cancer. They, they, then he met a young lady from Taiwan who flew 50 hours to make to take a picture with him. Then there was a young gentleman who came from Jordan to see him. That, that means something something to him. It means something to every person in the back. CM Punk missed them for 10 years, so he gets excited to come to Florida for the first time in a long time to share some news. Fans like them drive him another CM Punk champ fires up. When when fans hand him a bracelet that they took the time to make to make it may seem ins insignificant is Taylor Swift thing, but he but his Taylor Swift for men. They they're exactly like the bracelet that Drew McIntyre took off his unconscious body in his hometown of Chicago, Illinois. Let's talk about the hate. Drew McIntyre. While Drew McIntyre says he hates CM Punk and wants nothing to do with him, he he makes it personal. Drew McIntyre continues to wear a bracelet with his beautiful wife name on it. Like a light AJ AJ chant picks up. CM Punk says he wants to share the news with... Yeah, it says CM Punk wants to share the news. His bigger hater is the biggest fan. CM Punk made Drew McIntyre embrace it and talk to Adam Pearce unless Drew, Mc- Drew McIntyre is chicken. At Bash in Berlin, he wants to have a strap match. That means he'll threaten he'll threaten to McIntyre wr- wrist to wrist. You had to carry your opponent's across opponent's car car cast to for, to all four turnbuckles to win. CM Punk wants a strap match to win this you know what and takes his bracelet back. He'll leave Drew McIntyre with lasting scars so he will never forget the name of CM Punk. Drew McIntyre music hits and the Scottish warrior walks out, walks out to the stage. The crowd loudly boos him. Loudly boos him. Drew McIntyre says he's been thinking, thinking all week about what he'll do to CM Punk. Last week, CM Punk Embrace him and whip him like a petrol petro hunt child. Um, Drew McIntyre has been dreaming of all the violence he brings to CM Punk now. CM Punk challenged him to a strap match. C- has CM Punk started drinking? Drew McIntyre accepts the match. Um, 
CM, I'm not CM Punk. Drew McIntyre cannot wait a whole week to get that match. Drew McIntyre asked for Lauderdale, Lauderdale if they want a teaser. If CM Punk lose the strap, he'll give he'll give them a show. CM Punk says he's not afraid of Drew McIntyre. He'll give him the strap if Drew McIntyre gives him the bracelet. Drew McIntyre looks at CM Punk bracelet, which is still around his wrist. Drew McIntyre takes off takes it off and says, "No, CM Punk is a liar." April and Larry are safer at home, and Drew McIntyre, CM Punk side CM Punk says. It's not him attached to McIntyre. It's, it's McIntyre who is attached to CM Punk. It's a, a mediocre, mediocre segment with CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. I hope they're going somewhere with CM Punk's pending defense because that is getting a little tiresome. The heat is dying down for, for this view. They need something to give, give, give this a shot in the arm. The bracelet thing is getting. That's it. That this segment was a mediocre. This was a mediocre segment between CM Punk and Drew McIntyre. All right, let's move on. Video Packers Women's World Champion Liv Morgan and Dirty Dominic Mysterio are backstage. If Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley think they stand a chance against them at Bash in Berlin, they out of their minds. They're they're mo- they're the most dominant couple in the history of the of WWE. No one lays a finger on Daddy Dom and gets away with it. At Bash and Berlin, they'll be on top. Mysterio says he doesn't want to wait until Bash and Berlin to to get his hands on Damian Priest. He's not the same Dominic Mysterio he used he used to boss around. Dominic Dominic Mysterio tells him to leave Rhea Ripley in the back, and he'll leave he'll leave behind the Judgment Day. They should go one on one. In the ring, if Damian Priest man's enough, it, it's man enough. In the arena, the new day, Audacity Jones make their way to the arena. They'll face the final testament. Commercial break. Video package footage from two months ago shows the Florida Panthers celebrating of winning the Stanley Cup. All right, so we get the NHL NHL Hall of Fame. Roberto Longo is showing at ringside. All right. So we get a six-man tag team match. The New Day, Kobe Kingston, Xavier Woods, and Adasi Jones versus the Final Testament. Karen Cross and the Arthur of Fame, A. Cam and Rezar, are coming by uh, Paul Eldering and, Scar- and Scarlet. And this six-man tag team match, the, um, this was a um, this was a decent six-man tag team match. Karen Cross will start the match against Xavier Woods. They take their time before K- Kobe Kingston blind tags in. Kobe Kinson punches away at Karen Cross and gets him in the corner. Kobe Kinson avalanches Karen Cross three times. Karen Cross counters a whip for counters counters a whip with a forearm shiver in the shiver, shiver to the skull. Karen Cross puts Kobe Kinson in the corner and talks trash before laying in another forearm. Karen Cross sends him to the corner, but Kobe Kinson springboards off the second row with a drop kick. A Cam distracts the referee as Scarlet grabs. Kobe Kingston's ankle. Karen Cross hits Kobe Kingston with a, a with a bad break of follow by a Death Valley driver. Rezar tags in and slams him into the tar, tar buckle. Commercial break. Back from the break, Karen Cross is still talking, taking to taking it to Kobe Kingston. Kobe Kingston tries to fight him off, but Kobe Kingston connects with an exploder suplex. Karen Cross punches Audacity Jones all day for an A count tags in. But Kobe Kingston flips through a back suplex. A cam charge, but Kobe Kingston sends him shoulder first into the ring post. Xavier Woods wants a tag, but Kobe Kingston tags Audacity Jones to say, Xavier Woods is not happy. Audacity Jones runs wild on A cam, carrying across and a Rezar with a clothesline. Xavier Woods gets off the apron. Audacity Jones attacks Karen Cross before. The artists of pain double team him. Audacity Jones runs through them with a double clothesline and hits A count with a falling headbutt. Karen Cross breaks up the pin. Karen Cross hits the ropes and knocks Audacity Jones to to hit Audacity Jones to to his knees. 
with their clothes on. Kofi Kingston and his Kramer cross with their, with their trouble in paradise. Rizal grabs Kofi Kingston by the throat and sends him flying with a throw. With a throw. Xavier Woods hits Rizal with a, with a diamond elbow drop. A Cam hits Xavier Woods with a urange. Audacity Jones then takes A Cam out with a with the journey ends for the win. The winner by pin for the new day in Audacity Jones. This was a six. This was a decent six man tag team match. Paul Elderman yells at, yells in frustration at ringside. Kofi Kingston's own breaks with Audacity Jones and Xavier Woods. Dustin look as excited. The final testament continues to be a non-factor. This group is getting to be the total waste. It's a waste not to use Paul Edelman other than as the other as the old guy screaming at ringside. With Judgment Day running strong on this show, FT who shares some thematics similar doesn't. Okay, backstage segment. Damian Priest is backstage with Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley is worried worried the match against Dari Dominic Mysterio is a trap. Damian Priest says he'll walk through a minefield minefield arm in arm with her. As long as there is a breath in in their bodies. They won't stop until they pass Judgment Day on this lane. You know what Judgment Day? Michael Cole and Pat Michael Cole and Pat McAfee paid tribute to the Ava of the war of the Wild Samoans who passed away last week. So we get a video package, The Life of Legacy of Ava, Ava of the Wild Samoans, Rest in Peace, Alpha Anoa, 1943, all the way to 2000, all the way to 2024. Commercial break. 13,718 are, are in the Amaran Bank Arena a record for the Fort Lauderdale. Former UFC welterweight champion Rob, Robbie Lar is at ringside. We played last week on Raw. The Bronson Reed attacked the Miz in our truth. So we go to um, the gorilla position. Raw general manager Adam Pierce is backstage with the Miz. Adam Pierce says he wants, wants to suspend Bronson Reed, but he respects the fact that Miz wants this match. Miz says he doesn't know if he wants to do this. Maybe Adam Pierce should suspend Bronson Reed and ban the tsunami. But Bronson Reed hurt our truth Archu, his friend. Miz doesn't have a lot of friends. He may not want to do this, but he is but he has to. Alright, so we get the no disqualification match being Bronson Reed versus the Miz. And this match right here, another this was a um this was a strong match right here. This was pretty good. The Miz charged the ring and takes it to Bronson Reed. Bronson Reed pushes him into the ropes and av- avalanches him down. Miz is knocked out of the ring. Bronson Reed goes to go goes to get him outside. But Miz drives a chair into the Miz into his Miz station and smashes it on his back. Bronson Reed squats the chair out of his, out of Miz's hand. And Charles him. Bronson Reed goes for an avalanche against the ring post, but Miz sidesteps him. Miz throws three chairs into the ring, as well as four candlesticks. Miz gets a large trash can and tosses into the ring. Miz then looks around, and the crowd starts to get fired up. Miz then pulls out a table to a big ovation. Miz puts the table in the ring and grabs the candlestick. Miz smashes it. Yes, the Miz smashes it on Bronson Reed's back, but he intercepts another shot and knocks Miz down. Bronson Reed breaks the stick over his knee and throws it off the ring. Uh, throws it out of the ring. Bronson Reed set up the trash can and scoops slams Miz onto it. Bronson Reed grabs the flattening flat trash can and slams it off Miz's back. Bronson Reed sets up the steel chair and insists. Sits it on his, sits it on it as he keeps Miz down with a foot on his head. So go to commercial break. We're back from the break and Bronson Reed headbutts Miz down. Bronson Reed charges, but Miz sidesteps him and sends him head first, head first into a chair. Rages, rages, um, rages in in the corner. 
the table is also leaning in another corner. Miss kicks and punches Bronsery until Bronsery shoves him away. Miss dives a chair into Bronsery's midsection and hits him with a tornado DDT onto the chair. Miss covers one. Bronsery, Bronsery quickly kicks out. Kicks out. Miss is stunned by the one count. Miz grabs another kendo stick and hits Bronsby in the chest with it a few times, knocking him knocking him to the corner. Miz backs up and hits a planted corner clothesline with a kendo stick. Miz goes for the springboard, but Bronsby catches him. Miz sl slides off and big boots him twice. Bronsby is stumbling near the table in the corner. Miz charges, but Bronsby close hunts him down. Bronsery steps sets up for a power slam. Power, I'm sorry. Bronsery sets up for a power bomb, but Miz slides off. Miz goes for a skull crusher now into the table, but Bronsery gets out. Bronsery crushes Miz with a death valley driver through the table in a corner. Bronsery quickly follows up with a with a devastating tsunami for the win. The winner by pinfall, Bronsery. Bronsery, P. Bronsery isn't satisfied with this this victory and heads to the top rope but to to hit the Miz with another tsunami but Braun, Braun Strowman heads to the ring. Bronsery is stunned. Braun Strowman shouts at B. Bronsery who's laughing who, who's laughs back at him. Alright, another strong showing from B. Bronsery as he ran as he ran over the Miz. Miz did well with a few few hope spots. But Bronsbury was dominating. Um, dominant. And I'm sorry, dominant. It it looks like Bronsbury will be having a hard smash against Braun Strowman as we wait for Seth Rollins to come back. Hashtag WWE. I hope that Seth look, I ain't gonna cap. I hope that Seth Rollins comes back and get his get back on Bronson That's what that's what we need to ha that's what needs to happen. Seth Rollins needs to come back and get his get back on Bronsery. You know what I'm saying? Give up. Seth Rollins needs to give Bronsery six curb stomps. That's all I got to say. All right. Backstage interview. Jackie Redmond is backstage with Seamus. He is holding his hand in pain. He asks how his hand is. Seamus says it hurts. Pete Dunn went toe-to-toe -to -toe with him. Louis Couser interrupts and asks why Jackie Redmond is talking to him in opening match. She should be talking to Louis Kaiser, who is in pain, who is in the main event against Randy Orton. Sheamus asks Jackie Redmond to excuse him. Louis Kaiser says when he is done with Randy Orton, he is coming back to to Sheamus to settle things once and for all. Sheamus says a few broken ribs and a smash skull weren't enough for Louis Kaiser if he wants to finish the trilogy. Louis Kaiser knows when where to find him. Seamus will be enjoying a paint as he watches Louis Kaiser take an RKO. All right, so we go to backstage segment. Dirty Dominic Mysterio is walking backstage. Women's World Champion Lil Morgan embrace him. Dominic Mysterio will face Damian Priest next. Commercial break. The return of a class of a classic is teased for WWE Bad Blood. Backstage interview. Captain Kelly is backstage with WWE Intercontinental Champion Braun Breaker. She asks about his future plans now that Sami Zayn is behind him. Braun Breaker says it's a good thing he went to a highly in edu ed educated university. Apparently, there will be a tournament next week to the to the to determine his next challenger. Adam Pearce can't stand the fact that. He is progressing through the roster at a fast pace. Now he wants to stop him with stop him with a tournament. It's not his fault that he is a bad you know what and a Janice freak. It's not his fault that the dogs are barking in every city they go to. It's not his fault that he earned this Intercontinental Championship to the poor soul who wants who wins the tournament? He spear, he'll spear him through the floor, and give him the beating of a lifetime. There be that be Braun Breaker's fault. I don't know why Adam Pierce is hating on Braun Breaker. I don't know why, but let me continue. 
So we get Dirty Dominic Mysterio versus Damian Priest and Strongs in this match. It would just, you know, never happen. This match never happened. The as Damian Priest makes his entrance, he says something is off and turns to take out Carlito, JD Madonna, and Finn Balor. Damian Priest hits Carlito with a chair. JD Madonna grabs it, but Damian Priest sends him flying. Damian Priest grabs Finn Balor for South of Heaven on the floor and on the floor, but Carlito puts Finn Balor away. Damian Priest super kicks Carlito before hitting. JD Mad- Madonna with one. Finn Balor escapes in the arena. In the ring, Ray Ripley shows up behind Dominic Mysterio. Dominic Mysterio turns around and sees her. Dominic Mysterio turns and Damian Priest is in the in his path. Ray Ripley headbutts Dominic Mysterio and Damian Priest forearms him down. Ray Ripley goes outside and clears the commentary table. Damian Priest sends Dominic Mysterio out of the ring. And Rhea Ripley grabs him. Women's World Champion Lil Morgan hits Rhea Ripley with a steel chair and smashes her off the commentary table. The Judgment Day has a four-on-one advantage on Damian Priest in the ring. They eventually beat him, beat him down and hold and, and hold him up to watch Lil Morgan beat on Rhea Ripley. Damian Priest fought, fights out, but Carlito hits him with a with a backstabber to 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 take the back. Take back control. Take back control. I'm sorry. The Judgment Day forced Damian Priest to watch as Lil Morgan sends Rhea Ripley shoulder first into the ring post. She sends Rhea Ripley over the commentary table and whips her into the steel steps. Lil Morgan basically sends Rhea Ripley shoulder back into the ring post. In the ring, Finn Balor crushes Damian Priest with the coup de grace. Rhea Ripley is put into the ring. And Lil Morgan hits her with the oblivion. Finn Bella stomps away at Damian Priest as Dominic Mysterio goes to the top rope. Mysterio shimmies a la a la Eddie Guerrero and hits Damian Priest with a far splash. The crowd lightly boos as the Judgment Day stands tall over the Terror Twins. Strong segment with the new Judgment Day destroying the Terror Twins. They desperately needed to get some heat, and that. And that's what they did. Good stuff. Hashtag WWO. That was a strong, se- good segment by that, too. Commercial break. Replay moments ago, the Judgment Day destroyed Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley. Backstage segment. The Judgment Day is celebrating backstage. Finn Balor says that was just a little sample of what, what happened to Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley at Bash in Berlin. 30 Diamonds Mysterio says Damian Priest as world champion because of the Judgment Day. JD Madonna says. He's not the world champion because of the Judgment Day. Carlito says that's cool. Lil Morgan says Mysterio has been all has been all man at Bash in Berlin. And she'll make Rhea Ripley her, you know what? So we get a video package last week on Raw. The Un- Holy Union attacked the Pure Fusion Collective and Damage Control. So we get the WWE Women's Tag Team Championship match, Triple Threat Tag Team match. Damage Control, Il Sky and Kari Zane versus the Pure Fusion Collective, Shanna Baser and Zoe starts to come by Sonya Deville versus Unholy Union, Alba Frey and Elsa Dunn. And this triple threat match was a um that was this is a decent um decent match right here. All right, this was decent. After the after the ring introductions by Samantha Urban, all, a raw breaks out between the three teams. The, the unholy union is clear from the ring. The bell rings and damage control takes it to the pure fusion collective, which that faction's got off by the way. PFC is knocked out of the ring. Shen Eel Sky goes to the goes to lunch Kyrie's ain't over the top rope, but they came up way short. Kyrie's ain't hits the top rope with her mid section. Um and use the momentum to carry her over the top rope for a pursuit plancha on PFC. Good save. Eel Sky then wipes out the unholy union with a suicide dive. Commercial break. Back from the break. This match is a this match is taking place under the ridiculous two people at at, at a time ruler of triple threat tag team tag matches. 
Kyrie saying his story starts with a DDT. Shayna Baszler tags tag saying, while Kyrie saying his her hits her with the insecurity. I will fire his tag in his tag in all Shayna Baszler. Il Sky also tags in. Il Sky sends so he starts split into Shayna Baszler and knocks her down. Il Sky sends out a fire to the corner and, and hits a running elbow. Il Sky boots Elsa Dawn down. Il Sky knocks Shayna Baszler back. Shana, Il Sky hits Zoe Starks and Elsa Dawn with a springboard missile drop kick. Il Sky, Il Sky is fired up and hits everyone with a bullet train attack. Il Sky grabs out of fire. But our fire gets out and moves and heads to the top rope. Kyrie Zane stops our fire and Il Sky grabs our fire on the top rope. Kyrie Zane tags in. Damage control hits our fire with a double our frame with a double super super double team super flex. But Elsa Don but Elsa Don breaks it breaks up the pen. Back I'm sorry the, sorry, the match starts to break down. Uh, Alba Frey takes Shanna Baszler out and knocks Sonya Deville off the apron. Kari Zane spears Alba Frey down. Kari Zane knocks Sonya Deville off the apron. Shanna Baszler kicks, kicks and knees Kari Zane. Zoe starts tags, tags in off Alba Frey. Um, Zoe starts and Zoe starts and Shanna Baszler hit Eel Sky with the Death Valley Driver. Death Valley driver slash running knee combo. Kari Zane hits PFC with a flying cross body block. Kari Zane grabs Shanna Baszler, but Shanna Baszler forms her. Kari Zane absorbs it. They trade forms with Shanna Baszler coming out on top. Shanna Baszler hits the rose, but Kari Zane forms her. Shanna Baszler goes for a Kufuda clutch, but Kari Zane backs her to the corner. Kari Zane hits a nasty. Backhand on Shanna Baszler, taking her down. Kyrie Zane heads to the top rope. Elsa Elsa Don tags in. Elsa Elsa Don tag tags her tags in off Kyrie Zane. Shanna Baszler grabs the boot up on uh, uh, grabs the boot up on an insane elbow. Um, Shanna Baszler applies a cool clutch. Elsa Don hits Shanna Baszler with a backstab and hold her up. With Kyrie Zane still in the computer clutch, uh, Elba Frey. Elba Fire hits a same time bomb off the top rope onto Kyrie Zane and Shanna Baszler and picks up the win. The winners by Pinfall and Studio WWE Women's Tag Team Champions, the Unholy Union. This was a decent triple threat tag match, but I hate the inconsistency of the presentation. Sometimes triple threat tag have three people in tonight, only two. It hurts the brain. Logically, not much heat for this because none of these teams are really over big. Hashtag never did wrong. This was a decent triple threat match. All right, backstage segment. World Heavyweight Champion Gunther is giving Louis Kaiser a prep talk ahead of his match against Randy Orton in tonight's main event. So we go to commercial break, backstage interview. Jackie Redman is backstage with main event Jay Uso. She mentions WWE fans have been excited to see him and Sami Zayn interacting backstage. Sami Zayn isn't here tonight. Can he shine some light on that? Jay Uso says Sami Zayn is taking some time off, but he'll be back with a vengeance. Sami Zayn told Jay Uso that if he can't be champion, Jay Uso still can. Jay Uso says he heard Bon Breaker is talk, tech, talking about. Talk about needing a challenger. Jay Uso talk about Adam Pierce. Talk to Adam Pierce and will be in the Intercontinental Championship tournament. Next time he he's in this city, he'll be the Intercontinental Championship. Jay Uso is still is still looking for looking for his first singles title. Alright. Michael Cole calls Pat McAfee one of one of his best friends, Pat McAfee, will leave WWE Raw for the next few months as football season starts up again. They show a video of highlights of Pat McAfee last seven months, and WWE Pat McAfee is moved and says he'll be he'll be back in a few months. Man, I, I'm so sad about Pat McAfee's last day on Monday Night Raw. I am 
and I, I'm sad, and I'm going to miss Pat McAfee. Pat McAfee is so funny and hilarious on commentary. That's all I got to say. Michael Cole says Pat McAfee will be back in January for the first Raw on Netflix, which is a good thing. I'm glad Raw is going to be on Netflix um, in January. All right, let's move on. Next week on Raw, Braun Strowman versus Big Bronze Reed. I'm not going to care about that match. And the Continental Championship, no more contenders tournament begins. Uncle Howdy versus Chad Gable, which is Chad Gable's going to lose to Uncle Howdy next week on Raw. Anyway, Randy Orton makes his entrance. He'll battle Louis Kaiser next. Commercial break. CM Punk and Randy Orton will appear on the first two episodes of WWE NXT, which will debut on the CW Network on in October. Randy Orton will battle Louis, uh, will battle Gunther for the World Heavyweight Championship at Bash in Berlin. Can't wait to see that match. All right, so we get the main event of the evening: the Viper, Randy Orton. Versus Ludwig, Ludwig Kaiser. And this main event match right here. This was a solid main event match right here. So this was a solid main event. Main event match. Solid. This was a solid match. Between Randy Orton and Ludwig Kaiser. And let's go Randy Orton slash Ludwig Kaiser. Chant. I'm sorry. Let's go Randy Orton slash Ludwig Kaiser. Sucks chant picks up. Randy Orton it looks pleased with that. They lock up and Randy Orton apply a side headlock. Louis Kaiser whips him off, but Randy Orton runs him, runs him over with a shoulder tackle. Randy Orton pulls a pulls as Louis Kaiser gets to his feet. Randy Orton applies a race lock, but Louis Kaiser manages to break the grip. Louis Kaiser applies a race lock, but Randy Orton easily breaks the grip and connects with a headlock takeover. Louis Kaiser fights up and backs Randy Orton to the corner. Louis Kaiser gives a clean break. Before kicking and chopping him, Louis Kaiser talks trash. So Randy Orton wipes him, wipes him out with a forearm to the head. Randy Orton hits a followaway slam. Randy Orton attacks Louis Kaiser in the corner and starts up the transition to ten, pan, 10 punches. Randy Orton stops at nine and gets off the middle of the turnbuckle before hitting an uppercut. Louis Kaiser rolls out of the ring to recover. Randy Orton follow him out, so Louis Kaiser attack him with some uppercuts in a in a chop. Randy Orton is not happy with that chop and basically chops Louis Kaiser down. Randy Orton become, bounces Louis Kaiser off the commentary table. Randy Orton sets up for an in back suplex on the commentary table, but he throws Louis Kaiser aside when he sees World Heavyweight Champion Gunther standing in the timekeeper's area. Louis Louis Kaiser chop blocks Randy Orton's knee which was attacked earlier tonight. Louis Kaiser then gives Randy Orton back a suplex onto the commentary table. Louis Kaiser posts in the ring. Gunther points at Randy Orton. Louis Kaiser goes outside and sends Randy Orton's knee into the ring steps. Louis Kaiser, Louis Kaiser gets back in the ring and exits out the opposite opposite side. Louis Kaiser runs around the ring and drop kicks Randy Orton's injured knee into the ring steps. Randy Orton's collapse in pain. Commercial break. We are back from the final break of the evening. Randy Orton is taking it to Louis Kaiser. Randy Orton goes for goes for a back suplex, but his but his injured knee gives out. Louis Kaiser continues to attack to the leg and applies a leg lock. World heavyweight champion Gunther is pacing at ringside. Randy Orton try tries to fight out, but Louis Kaiser digs into the knee. Louis Kaiser released the hole and attacked the knee uh, off the ropes. Louis Kaiser goes to the goes to attack the leg with the ropes again, but Randy Orton kicks him over the top rope. Randy Orton goes to the uh, goes to the ringside and, and attacks Louis Kaiser. Randy Orton tries to bounce Louis Kaiser off the, the off the steps, but Louis Kaiser blocks it. Louis Kaiser bounces him off the steps and goes into the ring and out the other side. Louis Kaiser runs around the ring for another attack into the ring steps, but Randy Orton intercepts him. With a clothesline on to the floor, Gunther looks worried. Randy Orton hits Louis Kaiser with a back suplex on the commentary table and stares at Gunther. Randy Orton hits Louis Kaiser with the second back suplex on the table and looks at Gunther again. Randy Orton hits a third and third one and continues to look at Gunther. Randy Orton then grabs Louis Kaiser and launches him onto the commentary table for a fourth time. Randy Orton runs rolls into the ring to break the referee's count. Um, 
Louis, I mean, I'm sorry, Randy Orton gets Louis Kaiser in the ring and sends him into the ropes for a snap power slam. Randy Orton stares at Gunther. Randy Orton sets, up, sets Louis Kaiser up for a Draper DDT, but Louis Kaiser fights out and snaps him off the top rope. Louis Kaiser hits a step up in security for a two count. Randy Orton cu- cuts Louis Kaiser up and puts him on the top rope for a superplex. That was not the regular top rope superplex. superplex. Randy Orton normally does. That was from the middle t- middle rope in an RKO champ picks up. Randy Orton his Randy Orton hits Louis Kaiser with a vicious draping DDT. Randy Orton drops down and stalks Louis Kaiser. Louis Kaiser counters in RKO with the roll up for a two count. Randy Orton immediately pops up and hits Louis Kaiser with an RKO. Randy Orton covers Louis Kaiser for the victory. Gunther is not pleased. The winner, of, the winner of the match by pinfall, the Viper Randy Orton, and angrily, and anger Gunther gets in the ring, but Randy Orton greets him with some right hands. Gunther fights back with some uppercuts. Randy Orton fights back and sends him into the ring post. Randy Orton continues to punch the world heavyweight champion as the show comes to an end. Why would they cut that off? Why, why Gunther and Randy Orton continues to brawl? That, that did not make any sense. That WWE has to cut that off. It was a solid, well wrestled main event with Randy Orton going over Louis Kaiser. Easy build for Randy Orton versus Gunther. I wonder if Randy Orton and Gunther Brawl was building to more before they ran out of time. I did not like how that ended when Gunther and when when Raw went out of time between. Well, I did not like how Raw ended. While Randy Orton and Gunther were brawling and ran out of time. I, that part I did not like about Raw running out of time. But I like how Gunther and Randy Orton continued to brawl. That's all I got to say. It says, uh, this was another solid episode of WWE Raw. The show presentation is so solid. I don't worry about losing Pat McAfee energy soon. The, the show will also lose Pat Michael Cole for a bit as he moves to SmackDown. Good bill for WWE Bash in Berlin. I'm looking forward to it. So Michael Cole is going to move to SmackDown. I don't know how I feel about it, but it sucks. But it is what it is. All right. And WWE Raw goes off the air. All right, let me get my honest opinion. Now, WWE Raw was a decent show. And that's all I have to say. But anyway, if you guys enjoyed my WWE Raw review on highest, please Make sure you guys please go watch the video. Give this video a big fat thumbs up. Comment down below what you guys think of WWE Raw because it was a decent show. I just want to take the time out of my night by saying thank you guys so much for the big 6K subscribers, man. My goal for this year for 10K, but right now I want to grind to 7K. But I will get to but I will grind to 10K. But right now I just want to focus on getting to 7K. That's my next goal on YouTube. It's the 7K before I get to 10K. But anyway, I hope you guys will have a great night. Stay safe and always stay positive. And I will see you guys tomorrow for my WWE NXT review on highlights. And that's all I got to say. And, and WWE NXT is moving to CW on October. Um, That's all I got to say. But anyway, this will be boy Snapchat TV. Have a great night. Stay safe and always stay positive. Keep your crew. Keep your kings. Keep your club. Too sweet. I'm out of here. Gang. Mwah. Bang. Too sweet. Gang, and I will make a YouTube short video that's coming up next, and that's all I can say. Have a great night, stay safe, and always stay positive. Kept your crew, kept your kings, kept your club. Too sweet, and I'm out of here. Gang, have a great night, guys.